Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatly Tones Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you're all doing well. Now last weekend me and Mrs. Beatly Tone and a gang of friends we made the pilgrimage to the fair city of Liverpool and we kind of did all the Beatly things that are on offer um, in the city of Liverpool and I took lots of photos and a few videos and stuff and I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see what is on offer in Liverpool these days. Now I'm guessing that sort of a lot of UK based fans have been to Liverpool um, before and I've been many times before as well uh, sort of stretching right back to 1981 but I haven't been uh, to Liverpool probably for six years or so um, so I thought it was about time I kind of updated myself on what was what is available in Liverpool for Beatles fans now um, I was thinking that this uh, video will probably be um, of bigger interest to those of you who live overseas uh, obviously much more difficult to for you to get yourselves uh, to Liverpool and go and have a look for yourself so you know I've taken some videos and, and pictures and stuff of what is around so you kind of get an idea of what you might see um, in Liverpool if you ever manage to get there now the things that we did on our little trip was we went to um, the Great British Music Experience, which I'll tell you about in just a minute. Um, we took the Magical Mystery Tour bus, which is uh, basically a, a Magical Mystery Tour uh, coach, a look-alike coach that goes around the city of Liverpool and stops at some of the important sites. So you'll see um, where we kind of stopped on that tour. We also took a uh, a trip down Matthew Street. Uh, Matthew Street, of course, is the street in which the, uh, the the cavern sits. Not to be confused with my friend and fellow YouTuber from Boston, Matthew Street. That's a completely different Matthew Street. Uh, so we go down there. Um, down in Matthew Street, there is a new museum, the Beatles Museum, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm going to be showing you lots of stuff from that museum. Um, we also went to the cavern. Uh, we saw a Beatles tribute band um, on a, the Saturday night. And um, we went to the Beatles story, which is a, a, a long-standing sort of Beatles e uh, exhibition that sits on the Albert Dock there. So you're going to see um, lots of stuff, lots of artifacts that I saw. Um, so I hope you're going to enjoy this video. So we started off by going to the uh, the Great British Music Exhibition. Now the Great British Music Exhibition isn't um, you know a, a Beatles attraction, but of course uh, the Beatles are a big part of the British music experience. So of course there is some some Beatles stuff there, which I'll show you in a minute. But it's an exhibition that kind of starts off in the 60s and you know there's there's things there from the Beatles the Kinks the Rolling Stones uh the Who uh that sort of thing it sort of moves into the 70s with Pink Floyd and David Bowie um the, it goes through punk rock uh up to Britpop uh in the 90s uh with Oasis and Blur um the Spice Girls uh the X Factor that sort of thing so it's a big kind of big rounded exhibition and it's very good you know as I say not particularly uh, a Beatles exhibition but I'll show you the Beatly bits um, just in a second but definitely um, well worth a visit if you do go to Liverpool it's it's um, held in the Cunard building which uh, sits just behind the Liver building in Liverpool on the waterfront on the banks of the the River Mersey so let's go and have a look and I'll show you a couple of Beatle things that are in that exhibition so what you're looking at right now is the actual door to three Savile Row the Beatles offices and obviously they had the recording studio down in the basement the place where they did the rooftop concert now me I've got 
personal history with this door uh, back in 1980 or 1981. Uh, me and my girlfriend of the time, uh, we wrote our names on this door and I tried really hard to see if I could see if our names were still on the door. Uh, but my eyes are far too weak these days to be able to pick that out. Uh, I couldn't see where we'd written our names. So that was a little bit disappointing. But I was uh, absolutely delighted to be reacquainted with this door once again. And of course you can see that famous door from 3 Savile Row on the back of Ringo's album uh, Ringo Roto Gravure. Now moving on to this display, uh, we can see uh, a copy of With The Beatles signed by all four Beatles. There's uh, John's signature there, uh, Ringo and George at the bottom there and at the top there's Paul's signature and there's the actual disc sort of panning away to see the rest of this sort of display there's a few sort of magazines uh from the time uh beatles wig uh, little beatles guitar toy guitars and these rather nice four set of four uh drinking glasses with a beetle on each roll up roll up for the magical mystery tour step right this way uh, so the next thing I'm going to show you is our trip on the Magical Mystery Tour uh, bus around the city of Liverpool and a few of the stops that we made along the way. Um, interesting thing about this uh, this tour is that the compare, the host of the tour that does the commentary as you go round, um, if you remember the band Frankie Goes to Hollywood and their lead singer Holly Johnson, the compare is Holly Johnson's uh, elder brother um, as we go around if you want to uh, pause the pictures or um, expand your video to full size so you can see uh, it better uh, feel free to do so okay let's go so this is the magical mystery tour uh, bus with a fabulous number plate uh, f4 mmt f4 as in fab4 magical mystery tour fantastic uh, this is it obviously from the side and our first stop was at Ringo's home in Madrin Street. Now, unfortunately, the bus doesn't actually stop to let you get off. You just have to, it just parks up and you have to look down the street. Uh, um, opposite Madrin Street is the famous Empress Pub, uh, made famous by being on the cover of the Sentimental Journey album uh, sleeve. And uh, this is what it looks like today it's kind of been painted all psychedelically uh very nice indeed and um you can see this uh, inscription there this building appeared on the sleeve of Ringo Starr's first solo album Sentimental Journey and from the side um it looks like this uh, with this fantastic uh, mural of Ringo and uh, sort of yellow submarine blue meanies and that sort of caper uh, really really nice uh, uh, mural that is uh, moving on we stopped uh, we went round down Penny Lane uh, that is the shelter in the middle of the roundabout and uh, uh, just on the roundabout as well the barber shop um, is still is still there different barber same shop next we went to uh george's childhood home in arnold grove uh, unadopted means that it's not uh, under the jurisdiction of the liverpool uh, city council anymore uh, that's a look down the street uh, those old houses where you just open the front door and you're right on the uh, pavement uh, that is uh, the white door there. That is George's house number 12. And that's a, a close up of uh, his front door. Moving on, we went to Strawberry Fields, the famous gates at Strawberry Fields. Uh, really nice. Some of the graffiti there on the pillars uh, that hold the gates uh, together. Just uh, going along there very nice indeed uh we then stopped outside john's house now john uh you can't um 
you, could, you couldn't get off the bus here at uh, John's house. Now, John's house is currently owned by the British National Trust. And uh, if you organise a tour with the British National Trust, as these people here have done, um, you can actually go into uh, John's house and have a look round. You can see the blue plaque on the wall uh, there. You only get a National Trust blue plaque um if it's somewhere where a famous person lived and they've been dead for 20 years or more and they're still relevant. Now that little window on the side of the house there, that was John's uh, bedroom. And uh, on the sort of the gate, you kind of see uh, this little plaque, the childhood home of John Lennon. And then we moved on to Paul's house in Fulton Road. And uh, that is also a National Trust owned house as well. Uh, that's it from the outside. Uh, number 20 is where Paul lived with his dad and his brother Mike. And there's uh, also uh, a plaque outside uh, marking that Paul lived there. So my opinion of the Magical Mystery Tour was I thought it was a little bit overpriced at 18 pounds a person. It is a two and a half hour trip and the great thing about it is that you do get a commentary as you go around the city and uh, through all the different um, sites that you see along the way, uh, which is really great. You get a bit of a backstory. But the disappointing thing for me was that you could only get off the bus uh, at four of the different places. That was uh, Paul's house, George's house, Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. I would like to have got off at some of the other places. Uh, Ringo's house um, ha had a better look at Mendip's Aunt Mimi's house there. Uh, you know, uh, had a look at the mural, a closer look at the mural at the Empress pub and also St. Peter's Church in Walton Village where uh, John and Paul first met. We did stop there, but we couldn't get off the bus. So my advice would be if you do want to see all these places, uh, maybe get yourself a tour guide and make your own way around the city. Uh, and that way you can go and stop exactly where you want to stop rather than where they want you to stop. Uh, that was the only disappointing thing about it, uh, but I enjoyed the trip anyway. So this is the Hard Day's Night Hotel with its terrible, terrible statues of the four Beatles on its sills there. Totally inappropriate for a hotel called Hard Day's Night because all the statues are like the solo Beatles rather than the early Beatles. Now this is a posh hotel, a uh, themed hotel, um, but the main theme of it is that it's just a hotel with lots of Beatles pictures all over the place. Um, I'll show you uh, a close-up of some of these terrible uh, statues. Uh, there's Paul and there's John. And now we're going to uh, take a little trip down Matthew Street. Oh, he looks shifty. Look at his eyes. Very shifty. That's the uh, Sergeant Pepper uh, pub, which I can tell you was absolutely rocking on Saturday night. Uh, the Cavern Pub, which is opposite the Cavern Club. And there's a statue of John outside the Cavern Pub. And you can pose with uh, a statue of John there. That is the Cavern Club, the entrance to it. You go down the stairs into the club. And there's the famous sort of uh, uh, sculpture, the four lads who shook the world. And next door to that, is uh, Eric's famous punk venue in the 70s uh, with lots of pictures of some of the bands that played there um, back in the day. Coming down now to the King John pub there uh, with a little quote from In My Life, uh, the Rubber Soul bar uh, next door. All these places have live music pretty much all day and all night long. Uh, really great to see. Uh, above the Rubber Soul pub, these sort of images from uh, the Yellow Submarine film, Blue Meanies and all that sort of caper. Uh, now we're moving on to Castle Street. That is where the Nimes store used to be, Brian Epstein's record shop. And outside is a statue of Brian, which was only unveiled last August. And now we're moving on to the, the new Beatles Museum back in Matthew Street. 
and that is where we are going next. So as I said, the next place we're going to go and have a look at is the Beatles Museum in Matthew Street. Now this was completely new to me. I'd never seen it before. Last time I went to Liverpool, it wasn't there. Uh, so I was very excited to go and have a look around this. Now what I really like about this, this museum is um, it doesn't appeal... Uh, as much to general tourists as it would to sort of hardcore Beatles fans, the sort of geeky Beatles fans. Uh, I guess that's why I liked it so much. Now, this uh, museum is owned by uh, Rogue Best, who is Pete Best's half-brother and also the son of Neil Aspinall. Uh, you may know the story that... Um, that Neil Aspinall had an affair with Mona Best back in the day and uh, Rogue was the product of uh, that affair. Now, because of that, a lot of the artefacts in this museum um, come from Pete Best's personal collection and Neil Aspinall's personal collection um, as well. And what I like about it, although it sort of covers the whole sort of Beatles story, there's a very strong focus on the pre-fame Beatles. Um, so lots of artifacts from the uh, the Casbah, which I think kind of gets um, lost a little bit in the general Beatles story. Everybody knows about the cavern. Everybody knows about Hamburg, but the 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 Casbah kind of gets a little bit lost in the um, the whole concept of the Beatles story. But of course, the Casbah was really the first place that the Beatles played. Um, to a, a paying audience uh, it was the place where alan williams discovered them and became their manager uh, mona best pete's mum obviously um giving them space in the uh, the cellar of her coffee bar um to play uh, live music so uh some really great artifacts um, from that sort of period, um, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, there's also, if you remember a couple of months ago, um, I did a video on uh, John's toilet from Tittenhurst Park, which had been bought or been lent to this, this Beatles Museum. Uh, so you'll be seeing that again as well. I think I called it John's John uh, for that video um but i did really think this this museum is uh, is great so let's go and have a look at what's there so we'll start off with a few photographs this is the the queue the kids queuing up to get into the cavern to see the beatles and i was really surprised to see this picture of invisible ray unmasked at last this is the artwork as you go up the stairs of the museum and this is a picture of Paul taken by his brother Mike. Uh, these are the original plans for the Casbah, uh, the planning permission, and this is Pete Best's premier drum kit that he used between August 1960 and July 1962, which would include uh, the audition that he did with the Beatles for George Martin. Now this picture here, Paul with the microphone there in the Casbah, this is the actual mic stand that he's using in that photograph. So this is the front grill of Paul's bass speaker cabinet, uh, which when he got a new one, he just left the old one in the Casbah and uh, Mona Best obviously just kept it. Uh, this is Paul and Pete Best's police photos from when they got deported from Hamburg. And here are a pair of Pete Best leather strides and Alan Williams business card uh, that he signed him up. Now this is a contract between Alan Williams and the Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers uh, to do a gig at the Grosvenor Ballroom uh, on the 6th of June 1960 for which they got paid the princely sum of £10 each for doing two sessions of an hour each. Uh, this is George's Futurama Grazio guitar, which he borrowed from um, Rory Best. He played it in Liverpool, he played it in Hamburg, and he played it on the single uh, My Bonnie. So if you've heard that single, you've heard that guitar. Now this is a bit of a weird one. This is a picture taken, obviously, much later of Pete Best with uh, Andy White and a drum head of Pete Best uh, signed by both of them and a copy of the Love Me Do single there. Uh, this is a poster for the 1964 US tour uh, with all the venues that they played. And I love this picture of um, 
these little figurines of the Beatles where the guitars are much bigger than the Beatles themselves. These nice little uh, drinking glasses from back in the day and a toy Ringo drum there. And this is a platinum disc that was given to Neil Aspinall for the sale of uh, 1.2 million copies of Hard Day's Night back in 1989. Uh, this should interest some of the uh, Kiwi viewers to my channel. Uh, this is a program for the New Zealand tour of 1964. Uh, there, John Lennon's uh, famous leather cap. Uh, here we see the handwritten lyrics today, Tripper, which I'm sure will be appearing in the book for the Rubber Soul box set. And here it is, uh, John's John from uh, Tittenhurst Park. You've seen it before on my channel. Here it is, uh, in situ in the museum. Now, you may remember this scene from Magical Mystery Tour with the white cello. Uh, that is also in the uh, museum, originally planned to be... Um, uh, painted psychedelically but it never was so it remains in its uh, white form and then there's this little uh, display of uh, Brian Epstein's death the original Daily Mirror newspaper uh, some sheet music from you've got to hide your love away uh, quite appropriately so here we see a telegram sent by Mona Best to Clive uh, Epstein uh, sending sympathy on Brian's death and a uh, a little card that was sent back to uh, the best family from uh, from Clive Epstein thanking them for sending their condolences this is uh, an original uh, apple carrier bag that you'd get for if you bought something from the apple boutique and here is uh, something from Neil Aspinall's collection something that was sold in the boutique uh, and another little piece there and this was a apple boutique pillow and here we see the let it be display with the uh the american gatefold sleeve and uh, the original book that came with the box set now we all know this picture from mad day out uh, we've seen it lots of times before but here was a sculpture of that exact picture which i thought uh, was really cool now this is the war is over uh, poster which uh, presumably was supposed to be sent via john and yoko to uh, the wilson family that's harold and mary wilson harold wilson the former prime minister of the uk it says with love to the wilsons from john lennon and yoko ono so that was the Beatles Museum in Matthew Street. Uh, if you ever get to Liverpool, I would thoroughly recommend going to see it. I thought it was really good. Very reasonably priced as well. I think it was 12 quid to get in. Kids under 12 get in for free. And there are concessions for the over 60s as well. Uh, really worth seeing. Obviously, I couldn't show you everything. But I just showed you a few pieces that I thought that you would be interested in. Now, on the Saturday night, we went into the Cavern Club. Uh, itself now the first picture that you see you'll recognize as being the place where the Beatles played with the uh, the arch in the, the the you know with the cellar they just have sort of blokes um, like singer guitarists uh, doing cover versions in there these days but where we were was a kind of extension out the back that they've got there that they call the Cavern Lounge and we saw um, a Beatles tribute band called uh, the Cavern Club Beatles. Now, I'm not a big fan of uh, tribute bands, to be honest, but uh, this lot were really good. Uh, we had a really good night there. Uh, we were right at the front. Now, the bloke that plays John Lennon, I've never seen a bloke look more like John Lennon without actually being John Lennon himself. Uh, and you'll see that for yourself in a minute as I'm going to show you a few clips um, and hope that uh, YouTube don't pick it up for copyright reasons. Uh, the rest of the band, not so much. Uh, the guy that was playing sort of Paul McCartney's part was definitely in it for uh, his voice rather than his looks. He's quite a, a portly chap. And the fellow that was playing uh, Ringo had the most ridiculous wig I've ever seen in my life and was a little bit over-enthusiastic as a drummer um, but it was a great night and uh, well see for yourself
So these are the statues of the Beatles that are situated along the waterfront on the banks of the Mersey. You may recognise the pose from the front cover of the Live at the BBC uh, on Air Volume 2 uh, album. Uh, note the flowers left at the feet of John and George, presumably by fans. I've no idea who this idiot is. This pepper mosaic was in a shop window on the Albert Dock, but when you look a lot closer, uh, it's made entirely of jelly beans. So on the Sunday, we went down to the uh, Albert Dock, and down there is the Beatles Story exhibition or museum, if you like. And this is a much more sanitised version of a Beatles museum. Um, if you're going with friends who are not particularly Beatles heads, then they'll probably enjoy this more than they will the Beatles Museum in Matthew Street. Uh, it's more aimed at uh, tourists, but there's still plenty to see there for Beatles fans, if, especially if you've never been before. They do change it around there were different things there this time that I hadn't seen the last time I was there um, but it was Mother's Day on the day that we went and they were letting uh, mums in for free which pleased Mrs Beatley Tone no end uh, they do concessions uh, for the over 60s and kids under 12 getting for free so it's well worth a look if you're in Liverpool um, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's a more touristy thing anyway I took a few photos there so let's go and have a look so this is the Beatles story from the outside and this was something new this huge Hofner Basin amp to celebrate Paul's 80th birthday that was new this time and uh, when you see it close up you can see r the names of random tracks from his career written on the neck of the guitar now this is the uh, an original love me do single uh, signed to bernadette by paul mccartney and ringo Starr. and this is the uh, holy grail the 78 10 inch acetate of hello little girl with till I, there was you on the back that uh, brian epstein gave to george martin which helped uh, get them a audition this uh, is the ins inside of uh, bernadette Farrow's uh, handbag signed by uh, the Beatles uh, but with Pete Best rather than Ringo and this is a, uh, a, revol a commemorative revolver anniversary uh, violin bass Hofner bass uh, you can see it close up here very very nice indeed the Sergeant Pepper suits now, although it doesn't look it in my photograph, this, according to Sotheby's and Christie's auction houses, is the only copy of the White Album on blue vinyl. The story of how this came about, uh, they were pressing the White Album in West London in 1978. At the same time, they were also pressing Linda Ronstadt's album, Blue bio which was going to be on blue vinyl and the guy that was pressing the white album he took the white album pressed it on the uh, Linda Ronstadt press and got himself a copy of the white album on blue vinyl his name was Colin McDonald and years later he was working at a TV studio Paul McCartney was there and he got him to sign the album sleeve so this final picture is not from the Beatles story. It's actually taken in the Philharmonic pub, uh, which is the pub where Paul and his band did the live performance as part of the uh, thing that Paul did with James Corden, the carpool karaoke, where you're looking now at that window. That's where the band were lined up against that. They've kind of redesigned it a bit since then, but that's where it took place. Now, I know this has been another long video, and if you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking with it. Uh, but that is pretty much it from my little trip to Liverpool. We had an absolutely fantastic time, a really brilliant time. Uh, I hope this video has given you a little bit of a flavour of what is uh, available in Liverpool for Beatles fans, especially if you're overseas, where it's much more difficult uh, to get yourself to Liverpool to see it. For yourself so I hope you've found that uh, entertaining and useful now if you have liked the video um, please give it a thumbs up uh, get hit the like button and if you're new to the channel uh, please consider supporting the channel by hitting the subscribe button and uh, hitting the notification bell uh, which of course is absolutely free and um, 
if you want to leave me a comment um, please do as you know I uh, read all your comments and I respond to all your comments so if you want to leave me a comment please do so uh, thanks so much for watching as I say I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you next time bye bye